All right, so today I'm Essex hunting, but not the typical Essex species like muskies and big pike, and I love chasing muskies and big pike. But today going after grass pickerel, and I mean, I love chasing big pike, I love chasing big muskies. It's probably why I find this fish so cool, even though they're a fraction of the size of them. Uh, you know, they're, it's the same fish, just in a smaller package. I mean, they've got the same mentality, the same temperament. They want to kill anything that comes near them. Uh, you know, they'll just hammer a bait, I mean, for their size. I mean, obviously there's a tiny fish, but it's, it's so cool to see them. Uh, you know, and it's a fish where, until I really kind of figured them out in Nebraska, you know, it's one of those fish where I always wondered when I'm, when I'm, uh, you know, driving over a stream in the sand hills. It's like, oh, is there pickerel in there? You know, it's one of those I was just thinking about, and, and uh, you know, here a couple of years ago, I uh, made a pretty good effort with a buddy of mine to try to track them down and find them. And since that point, we've found them in several spots, and and uh, you know, they're they're not uncommon in the right areas. But again, it's a small fish. You know, most people aren't going to catch them because they require really small tackle. Uh, you just open water fishing for them is not a real successful method of trying to catch them. But I am on the Elkhorn River, uh, which is one of their mainstays in Nebraska. The Elkhorn and the uh, Lower Niobrara River is where the majority of the pickerel are found in Nebraska. Um, so there's a couple of feeder streams here, cool water feeder streams. Uh, I'll be looking in the backwaters to see what we can find. Freaking highway right next to me <laughs> so there's traffic everywhere but it's a little noisy but i know there's pickerel here we'll see what we can find so this spot is a little deeper than i would usually expect to find them but i did see a couple here at the edge uh so you know you never know The problem with spots like this is that they are full of green sunfish and just blind casting hoping to get a pickerel you've got to get by so many green sunfish it's just crazy so it's almost kind of <laughs> and they're just attacking it like the minute it gets in there I can see them like the minute it gets down there, they just come flying out. And... Oh, that's. <laughs> well, that's something. That looks like a pumpkin seed bluegill hybrid. Or maybe even just a pure pumpkin seed. <laughs> well, that's interesting. That is not. Something that I would expect in Nebraska on this spot, but that's pretty cool. That's a pretty rare fish in Nebraska. There's only a couple of spots you can catch them. And I see that and there's another one. Holy cow. That is wild. That's a pure pumpkin seed. <laughs> That is crazy. I would have never expected that here. That's cool. That is a tough fish to get in Nebraska. Like I said, there's only a couple of places you can catch them. That's pretty crazy. Wow, I did not. I would have never expected a pumpkin seed here. That's awesome. Very cool. That made stopping and fishing this little little thing worth it right there. That's crazy. green sunfish. So 
So there is some pickerel in here because I saw them, but they saw me and spooked in here and trying to blind fish anything that may be in the deeper water there is just, there's just too many green sunfish. This guy's making some good time for a clam. Shoot, it's pretty big, almost looks like. Plain pocketbook, I believe, which is actually a species of concern in Nebraska, if that's what it is. I think that's what it is. I always think it's kind of wild. I mean, this thing up here, this will almost dry up from year to year. The stuff, this stuff is adapted. It finds its way. It gets in. You know, there's tons and tons of micros here. They just get into these the ditches and the springs and the water comes back up and they come back out. All the stuff that's adapted to live in Nebraska. So this is the Elkhorn River behind me, uh, which is pretty much the vector that these grass pickerel have used to get up to this part of Nebraska. Uh, they're kind of unique because the population of, of grass pickerel here in Nebraska is separated from the rest of their population by a pretty good distance. Really, you've got to go to, you know, southeast Missouri before you start to get back into, you know, real grass pickerel territory. But they like, you know, cooler water. They like vegetation. Uh, so the Missouri River was the vector for them to get into Nebraska. But once they got here, you know, there's all these cool water, you know, sandhills feeder streams that, that run into you know, the, the Elkhorn and the Niobrara River, which run both run into the Missouri. And that's how, you know, they, they got up those rivers and they started finding these cool water streams up here, which is why we've got a population that, that's, you know, thriving so far away from the main body of the, where the rest of their population is at. So, uh, you know, in Nebraska here, their range is restricted to, you know, kind of a Sandhills, North Central, you know, somewhat Eastern Nebraska. There's not a ton of them in eastern Nebraska along the Elkhorn. Um, they are there if you find a cool water stream. Again, you'll find you know ones that are you know probably moving upstream and they find that suitable habitat and they stop. But it's kind of neat. But this is this is the the Elkhorn here. Um, what it looks like in this part of the state. Water's down. It's late summer, and I won't see them in the main current here as much. But, you know, the backwater is like this, like if you get more frogs, you get these calmer backwaters with some vegetation and then you'll see them. Oh, that one is packed full of micros, minnows of type. You have to find out what those are. But you can kind of walk this, this river and, you know, and you don't, you know, you just look for those cool water streams and anywhere you find a cool water stream running in, so this is kind of the thing, you just kind of really slowly work your way along these weeds and hope to see one sitting in the weeds. And I mean, they blend in so well that they're tough to see. So I'll kind of just dunk this out ahead of me too a little bit just randomly to see if one will come flying out and just grab it. They do spook very easily and all these frogs that keep jumping in all over the place are not helping because that will scare them. Like they, they really are spooky. I mean, they're sitting in such shallow water. You would assume anything sitting up here would be, but There are so many frogs in here. Oh my God, there's so many frogs. So I'm using this big bream buster to be able to reach out ahead of me a long ways before I get there. This is where you find them. Just the thick weeds hanging out in there. 
you just gotta get lucky and see one or you know like i said just dunk it in kind of an open spot and jig it around a little bit and see if one comes out i'm gonna go down the other side of this and see what i can see so i just snuck down to this backwater and this is totally separated from the main stream but when the water's high it's not and clearly pickerel have gotten in here see him sitting up here there's two right there there's a third right there and usually they're in the vegetation and it makes them really tough to see these kind of stick out a little more because they're kind of out in the open but that's where you find them is really shallow they seem to really sit up shallow usually in the weeds and they are camouflaged like crazy and i'm gonna see if i can get any of these to hit here heck yeah look at that it's a little grass pickerel i couldn't get him to hit a fly but i put a little piece of worm on a tiny little hook and dropped it down there and they smoked it like the minute it hit the water man that is cool they are such a cool fish miniature northern miniature muskies Man, that's cool. Get him back in the water. <laughs> well, there he goes. And that's where they hang out. Yeah, that's cool. So I'm at, I'm at this backwater and uh, I walked up here and I could see a couple sitting in there. And I dropped a fly in there and just put a copper john on because I, mean, I have this theory that I could catch every fish in fresh water with a copper john. It's just everything seems to love them. But they would not hit that copper john. Uh, so I switched up and just put a little tiny piece of a red worm on a little hook. And uh, man, the minute it hit the water, like three of them just exploded out of the weeds and one of them just hammered it. Like there's just, you know, I mean, they're, they're an Essex. They're a, a miniature musky. Like they, they're a much, much smaller. I mean, they're tiny, but they have that same attitude where anything that moves near them gets murdered and it's great. That's why I think these fish are so cool. They're like tiny little, tiny little muskies, but they will just annihilate anything. They've got that same temperament, the same hunting strategy. You know sit and wait in the weeds uh that's so cool um but i'm going to keep going on here and see what i can find there's i can see a few others in here we'll see if we can get a couple more all right so i got another one really fits my phone tag but he's still pretty tiny look at that that's pretty sweet such a cool fish i mean they're just like their bigger cousins so cool so neat And that's usually what you see. I always kind of try to look for that line down the back. But if they're in the weeds, that even is tough to tough to see because it blends in so well. <laughs> it's such a cool fish. I just, uh, there's a little backwater right here. Again, looks like a good spot. It's where a tree fell in, but it's separated from the, from the main river. So I just ran my net through just the, the end of it here and got one to, actually netted one. That's pretty sweet. Such a cool fish. I hate to keep saying it, but they really are.
you know, and of course they're, uh, you know, a subspecies of redfin pickerel, which I would not be surprised if at some point they would be considered their own species. I'm gonna take him over to the main river here and let it go because it ain't gonna last in that tree. Look at that. Such a cool fish. Okay, so a uh, successful day. Um, I ended up catching, I think, six or seven of them. Uh, netted a couple more, so it's always a fun fish to find. Cool to see them. Um, obviously, I've got kind of a, a weak spot for this fish. Um, it is the fish that this page is named after. Uh, the flying part of flying pickerel is a whole different story. Uh, we'll get to that sometime. <laughs> but it's, it's an interesting story. Uh, but anyway, it was kind of a fun day. Uh, I, ended up, I caught like, I think eight or nine different species of fish just pitching that jig around the river here. So, uh, you know, more than I probably would have expected and, you know, caught a lot of different stuff while looking for the pickerel. So that was, it was kind of fun. So, uh, thanks for watching and go fishing.